Hello there. My name is Ryan. I'm Ellen. And today we're looking at another asymmetric yep. card game, but this is kind of a small box card game called Fugitive, uh, designed by Tim Fowers. And for this particular game, I'm playing the Fugitive. And I'm playing the Marshal. And the way the Fugitive plays is he or she draws cards and is playing right, face down three. cards. These are the hideouts. Incorrect. And okay. they are numbers that are going up in unknown increments to be trying to keep away from the marshal, not knowing where the hideout is. Whereas the marshal is playing more of a deduction game. So the marshal is drawing cards, being able to eliminate those being possible numbers that are played face down. And then due to the mechanics of how the fugitive has to play cards, every card has to be within three of the previous card um, with some exceptions. So you'll notice the fugitive just played a three card stack those extra cards allow for the jump to be bigger than average. Without any face down cards, the jump can only be one, two, or three. The cards that just got circled are because he's now worked out that those are what my first two hideouts have to be. Yeah, so on the marshal's turn, the marshal takes a guess as to what a hideout potentially is. So I've already guessed three, I've already guessed two. The fugitive starts with one, two, and three in their opening hand. And so, the assumption is that this first jump has to be one, four, and then some Guessing other number that has been sprinted ten, to potentially four, larger than seven. And we have a correct guess. And if the marshal guesses multiple things, if any one of them is wrong, then the fugitive doesn't flip up any of the hideouts, which is why you saw me stop and check all of them before flipping any of them up, even though obviously the first two were going to be correct. Yeah, so you can guess one hideout or you can guess multiple hideouts, but if any of them are wrong, the entire guess is wrong and you don't get to know what was wrong about it. Plus now guess you'll have the information team. about what cards I used up doing the sprint. Yep. Obviously with this being lower cards that had already gone past, it doesn't actually give him that much information. All right, so the cards now are... So, for example, the last card that's face up is now 10, and the card after it doesn't have anything to boost it. So that card has to be 13, 12, or 11. Similarly, with the next card, there's no boost on it, and so because 13 has already been eliminated, he's going to know it's either 12 or 14. And with the one after that, Similarly, unboosted, it gives him a lot of room in terms of the deductions. So something interesting here that may not be immediately apparent is that the amount that a card boosts by is represented by the little uh, shoe print icons in the corner. And so even cards will always boost you two, and odd cards will always boost you one. So notice you can jump from four to ten with, like, Three will only get you to seven, and then adding the extra three boost will put you up to ten. But, but that, that makes even... Uh, yeah, go on. Oh, that also means that when you have a face-down card, since you don't know if it's going to be a one footprint or a two footprint, any single face-down card means that that next one could potentially 16. be four above or five above. But what's really important to know is it doesn't have to be either above. It could be a blind. You could play from, you know, the 11. I could have played a 12, but with a boost to make him think that I had sprinted really far. I don't think we do any blinds in this particular run through, but that is part of the strategy of Fugitive. Uh, part of the strategy as well is that the double boost cards are all even and the... Um, I'm guessing 14 and 21. 14 and 21. Yeah, so there's already a circled on the 14 because we already know that that's... Incorrect. Which, Which I don't makes... think you could have possibly known. Oh, no, you had to know because if it had been 12, then the 16 would have had to be boosted. Yep. So, yeah, you had to know that one. But that's basically only guessing for 21 because 14 is known. Uh, but what I was saying before, uh, what, getting back to the thing before, is that... Um, even numbers are kind of more valuable to keep in your hand because they can boost you farther in terms of sprinting, in terms of like playing higher numbers. 
You'll notice we're drawing off of the same decks, so there's card denial happening as well, that Marshall is taking 14, away cards I might need. That's where he's getting his information in terms of what I can't possibly have played, but it also occasionally means that those sprints get very challenging. Did we get, so 14, 20, and 26, but 22 wasn't guessed in there. Okay, but 22 is known. 15. And the card after 26, because 27 and 28 have already been drawn, it has to be 29. It has to be 29. So at this point, if I don't get a uh, hideout down that you can't be 100% on, it's just game over. Some math and some strategizing. And because the 21 was my boost card on the 26, I know that he has the information to eliminate 21. I don't know. No hideout. Okay. Oh, I would know that you knew the 23 because we're through that pile of numbers. So if I don't have it, that means you have to have had it. So I know you know 22. So this should be the end of the game right 22 here. 22 and 29. And yep, and that should be game. All right. I should have done the hideout. I had one, but it was a gamble because it would have used up a high card that I needed. All right. All right, so that's a win for the marshal. <laughs> so I had 34 was the next lowest card I had. Okay. And the only thing that would boost it was my 40. 